Lecture 46, Dip Isogons and Fold Classes A dip isogon is a line from the top to the base of a folded layer, joining points of equal dip. We can construct the isogon by tracing a reference plane, preferably perpendicular to the axial surface of the fold. Then, we construct a line of angle alpha with respect to the reference plane, and look at the points of tangency of this line with the top and base of the layer. The dip isogon joins these points of tangency. We can measure the thickness perpendicular to the direction alpha, or T alpha. This is the true thickness of the layer. We can also measure the thickness of the layer at the hinge of the fold, and along the axial surface. This is the thickness, T0. T alpha prime is the ratio of T alpha and T0. We can classify folds based on their dip isogons. This is known as the Ramsey classification of folds. Class 1 folds have convergent dip isogons. Class 2 folds have parallel dip isogons. And Class 3 folds have divergent dip isogons. Class 1A folds have strongly convergent dip isogons. The curvature of the outer arc is lower than the curvature of the inner arc. The smallest true thickness and vertical thickness is at the hinge. Class 1B folds have moderately convergent dip isogons. The curvature of the outer arc is lower than the curvature of the inner arc. Isogons are perpendicular to the outer and inner arcs. The true thickness remains constant throughout the fold. And the vertical thickness is minimum at the hinge. These folds are called parallel or concentric folds. Class 1C folds have weakly convergent dip isogons. The curvature of the outer arc is lower than the curvature of the inner arc. The true thickness is maximum at the hinge, and the vertical thickness is minimum at the hinge. Class 2 have parallel dip isogons. The curvature of the outer arc is equal to the curvature of the inner arc. Isogons are parallel to the axial surface trace. The true thickness is maximum at the hinge. The vertical thickness remains constant around the fold. Such folds are called similar folds. Class 3 folds have divergent dip isogons. The curvature of the outer arc is greater than the curvature of the inner arc. The largest true and vertical thickness are at the hinge. These different fold classes are plotted in this diagram. The x-axis is the local dip of the layer, alpha. The y-axis is T prime alpha. Class 1b, or parallel folds, plot along the horizontal line, T prime alpha equals 1. Class 1a folds plot above class 1b folds, and class 1c folds plot below class 1b folds. Class 2 folds are defined by a curved line in the graph and class 3 folds plot to the left of the class 2 line. Class 1b folds or parallel folds are the most common in rocks. In these folds, layer thickness is conserved, and the axial surface is the bisector of the interlimb angle. This is shown to the left in a diagram, and to the right in a non-vertical exaggerated, seismic section in depth, of a syncline. In non-parallel folds, on the other hand, layer thickness changes across the structure. The axial surface is not any more the bisector of the interlimb angle, but the orientation of the axial surface is given by the equation in the figure. This is shown to the left in a diagram, and to the right in a non-vertical exaggerated, seismic section in depth, of an anticline with a thicker limb. To learn more about this, read Chapter 12 of Fossen, and do his e-learning module on folding. Also, answer these questions.